Today's show is sponsored by the Electric Vehicle Association. Join up to support the electrification of transport and get the help you need to finance your own EV or clean energy future. And by Energy Sage. Visit the link in the description to find local verified solar experts, heat pump experts, and community solar projects in your area. And by Atmos Financial. Bank better with a financial technology company that's powered by a portfolio of clean energy investments. Welcome back to another episode of TEN, Transport Evolved News. Thanks for joining me. A quick editorial before we get going today. As we noted in last week's show, there's been a noticeable rise in bovine byproduct in the comments section, and we've heard from a few people that are upset we're no longer moderating the comments. Doing so would be an almost full-time job in of itself, and we'd rather make more awesome content for you all to enjoy. At the tail end of this week, Elon Musk said that he wants Tesla shareholders to vote immediately on Tesla moving its state of incorporation from Delaware to Texas. Musk posted a poll on X asking followers if Tesla should make the switch after a Chancery Court judge in the state of Delaware voided a reward package worth 56 billion US dollars that was agreed on by the majority of Tesla shareholders in 2018. The judge said that Musk, quote, enjoyed thick ties with the directors tasked with negotiating on behalf of Tesla and dominated the process that led to board approval of his compensation plan, end quote essentially agreeing with Tesla shareholder Richard Tornetta, who had filed the lawsuit against Tesla and Musk on the grounds that it was excessive and that it breached both fiduciary duties. Shortly after the ruling, Musk stated, quote, never incorporate your company in the state of Delaware, end quote. And he now wants Tesla shareholders to approve Tesla moving its state of incorporation to Texas. Why the sudden plan to move? While we're likely to get hate mail and worse for saying so, given the timing, it seems Musk is hopeful Texas courts will be more favorable to Tesla in any future cases, even though Delaware is famous for being one of the easiest states for a company to be incorporated in. When automakers announced their intent to make a switch from CCS Type 1 connectors in North America, adopting Tesla's NAX inlet instead, many automakers promised existing customers would soon be able to use Tesla's supercharger network via new adapters. This week, Ford, the first automaker to announce the switch, confirmed it will soon begin shipping NAX adapters to existing F-150 Lightning and Mustang Mark E customers. What's more, those adapters will be shipped free of charge to the customer. While Ford has yet to officially detail the exact process of charging on Tesla's network, it's likely the end experience will be very similar to using one of the existing charging station providers that have signed on to Ford's Blue Oval Charge Network. We have an adapter in the mail, so watch this space. The Polestar 4 has now officially gone on sale in Europe and Australia. Being marketed as an SUV coupe, the Polestar 4 does have a full traditional hatchback, giving plenty of access to the rear of the vehicle and allowing large things to be carried with rear seats down. But what's different about Polestar 4 is its complete lack of rear window, with a high-mounted rear-view camera and centre mirror screen replacing a traditional optical mirror. On sale in Europe from 68,500 euros, including taxes, its entry-level long-range single-motor variant offers up to 379 miles, 610 kilometers, on the WLTP test cycle. Meanwhile, its performance variant, while shorter on range, packs 400 kilowatts at the wheels. When General Motors decided to cancel production of its second-generation Chevrolet Volt range-extended EV after two years of production, it made the statement it was time to go all-in on EVs instead. 
But this week, Mary Barra, who has come under increasing pressure for promising things that GM has failed to deliver, announced that GM is doing a U-turn on plug-in hybrids. During GM's earning call this week, Barra claimed GM was committed to, quote, eliminating tailpipe emissions, end quote but that, quote, deploying plug-in technology in strategic segments will deliver some of the environmental benefits of EVs as the nation continues to build its charging infrastructure, end quote. Given that there are plenty of scientific studies showing plug-in hybrids are nowhere near as emissions reducing as claimed in the past, this is just the latest in a long line of automakers delaying EV promises and deciding that profits come before a livable planet. We should all be mad. And since we might be feeling a little frustrated right now, let's go to a story in a similar vein. The confirmation that Toyota has been found cheating in diesel certification tests. Making a public statement on Monday, Toyota Motor in Japan said that it would halt shipments of 10 different models that use diesel engines, including the high ace van, the Land Cruiser and more, after it was discovered that engineers at its sibling company, Toyota Industries, used different software during engine certification tests than the software used in its production vehicles, meaning that all of the engine data for those vehicles was essentially fabricated. While Toyota has halted production, it claims production engines do comply with standards. To something much more exciting now, particularly for fans of the Nissan Leaf or other Chadamo based EVs. It's no secret that in recent years, Chadamo has been left out in the cold when it comes to public charging infrastructure, with many charging locations only offering one Chadamo compatible charging station and many new sites offering none at all. But as we've been aware for a while, many companies are working on Chadamo to CCS adapt that allow you to use a Chadamo car at a CCS charging station. Because the two different standards use different protocols, it's not just a physical connector, it's an electrical connector too. But a few weeks ago, our good friend Dala from Dala's EV Repair in Finland successfully demonstrated charging a Nissan Leaf at a CCS Type 2 charging station using just such an adapter made by Dong Huan Long Good. I don't think there's a CCS Type 1 yet, but we can live in hope. More good news in the charging world next, this time in the US, where Daimler Truck North America, Navistar and Volvo Group North America have created a new coalition to accelerate the rollout of charging stations for electric trucks. While you might be questioning why Tesla isn't part of the group, it is worth noting that when it comes to market share, these three companies capture about 70% of the medium and heavy duty electric truck market in the US, so it really makes sense they're working together. The goal, through powering America's commercial transportation, aka Packed, they'll work to advocate for truck friendly charging sites, help accelerate the deployment of the 700,000 truck friendly charging stations they say are needed by 2030, and more. Bring it! In order to build the US's first LFP battery production facility, Ford has been working alongside LFP battery specialist CATL to make everything go as smoothly as possible. But the fact Ford is working with CATL, a Chinese-based company, has upset multiple Republican lawmakers who want the Biden administration to investigate Ford and its relationship with the firm and three other Chinese firms working on its facility. Ultimately, they allege Ford's new plants could attract US federal government tax incentives designed to encourage domestic EV battery cell production, but that in turn could result in in Chinese companies, and thus the Chinese government, getting US taxpayer dollars. With the US general election just 10 months away and anti-EV political rhetoric at an all-time high, this could be a bumpy ride for Ford and, in fact, any other automaker looking to work with Chinese-based battery firms. It's become something of an expectation in the EV world that new electric vehicles will get delayed shortly before they're due to start deliveries, and it's usually down to software glitches. 
this week, a Volvo became the latest to confirm that there's a delay on European deliveries of its all-new EX30 electric SUV. The second time Volvo has been forced to delay deliveries of a vehicle due to software issues, a source close to the firm told Automotive News Europe that Volvo had identified an issue with EX30 software version 1.2 and that while Volvo does plan to offer OTA updates in the future, this particular issue can only be fixed by visiting a dealership. Right now, we are unsure when the software updates will be ready and pushed to customers' cars ahead of deliveries. But if you are in the line for an EX30 in Europe, we'd love to know what Volvo has told you. So reach out in the comments below. You might not know this, but while the price of conventional silicon-based photovoltaic solar panels has come down a lot in recent years, the cells in those panels are still pretty energy inefficient at turning photons hitting them into electrical current. But this week, Oxford PV, a company spun off from the University of Oxford in 2010, announced it's reached a breakthrough milestone in perovskite on silicon, tandem solar cells, producing a tandem solar cell with 421 watts of maximum power output over an area of 1.68 square metres. For reference, the traditional silicon solar cells on the roof of my home are 25% larger but only produce 5% more power than the panels made by Oxford PV. Perovskite cells require far less energy to produce than traditional solar cells, don't have to use silicon at all unless they are used in tandem cells, and can be printed on a wide range of different surfaces. And all of that is a fantastic segue into a word from one of today's video sponsors, Energy Sage, after which I'll bring you the short shorts. Energy Sage helps homeowners connect with local verified solar installers across the US and now heat pump specialists in select markets who really know their stuff and can help you navigate the process of installing solar panels, help you join a community solar program, or in fact, get a heat pump installed. We used Energy Sage when we were looking for installers willing to help us put solar panels on the roof of our home, and our Energy Sage verified installers were professional knowledgeable and even put us in touch with an amazing credit union that allowed us to finance our panels for as low a monthly payment as possible. Follow the links below to sign up for either of Energy Sage's free, no obligation services and get the ball rolling today. If you do choose to use an Energy Sage installer for your project, we will also get a small referral fee so you'll help the channel too. And now it's time for Short Shorts. Just a week after Porsche officially unveiled its all-new Macan EV, multiple news outlets are claiming that the car's 100 kilowatt hour battery pack will be supplied to Porsche by CATL. While neither firm has confirmed the rumor, CATL supplies many legacy automakers. Daimler Truck North America has officially delivered its first Freightliner E Cascadia Class 8 big rig to Mexico. While production has been full swing at the firm's Oregon production facility for some time, this is the first time a Freightliner E Cascadia has been sold to a Mexican customer. StoreDot says it's produced its first prismatic XFC battery cells for use in future electric vehicle battery packs. The company has been working on turning its lab-certified XFC cells into durable, high-capacity production-ready cells for use in cell-to-pack battery packs for production EVs. Omoda, a new EV Chinese brand owned by company Sherry has officially launched its Omoda 5 electric SUV for the UK market. Already on sale in the PRC as the Cherry Omoda 5, the decision was made to drop the Cherry prefix for Europe, presumably to avoid confusing it with the Nissan or Datsun Cherry of years gone by. The CFO of Porsche, talking to Automotive News Europe this week, said that the European Union is seriously considering pushing back its planned 2035 ban on new internal combustion engine vehicle sales. A slowdown in EV orders is allegedly to blame. 
pushbacks are plenty with Renault, which has just confirmed that it's cancelled plans to IPO its EV spin-off brand Ampere. It had promised a 10 billion euro valuation for the EV arm, but now says it will remain off the stock market and plans to launch seven new EVs instead. Tesla is taking a defensive stance regarding both itself and past anti-union tweets made by Elon Musk. After a ruling by the NLRB found Tesla violated labor laws, both Musk and Tesla are appealing to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. Watch this space. Mini has teased new videos of its Aceman ongoing final testing ahead of a planned debut later this year. While we love seeing new testing videos from automakers, for some reason unbeknownst to us, Mini decided to share this all-vertical video format. Lucid Motors has confirmed that it will offer a police spec version of its Lucid Air for use by law enforcement due to display at the World Defence Show next week in Saudi Arabia. This feels very much like a variant designed exclusively for the Saudi police force, who are known for their love of supercars. Tesla is reportedly looking to build a new LFP battery cell factory in Nevada, which Bloomberg states will use battery production equipment from CATL. The report is careful to note that CATL employees will only be present to help set up the equipment. Looking to build on its success in the EV market, Hyundai is reportedly working on a new partnership with Chinese firm BAIC to establish an EV brand in China. The report from the Korean Economic Daily suggests the partnership builds on existing synergies between the two firms. BYD has shared the first official images of a brand new EV it will bring to market this year. Called the Yuanap SUV, it will initially go on sale in China, but suggestions are that if there's enough demand, the $20,000 EV could go on sale elsewhere too. Rolls-Royce has officially recalled its Spectre EV to address an issue that could result in insufficient grounding between the front electric motor and chassis. According to the recall notice, the issue is caused by adhesive residue that could increase electrical resistance. S&P Global Mobility has predicted that this month a total of 8% of all new vehicles sold in the US will be all electric. It's the first time that EVs are expected to reach an 8% market share, helped on by changes in US federal tax credit code. After helping Polestar grow into a well-known EV brand, Volvo is looking to sell its shares in Polestar to its parent company, Geely. Bloomberg reports Geely will help relieve the financial pressure on Volvo by buying 48% in Polestar. It's official. Data from the US state of California shows that one in every eight new cars registered in the state last year were Teslas, equivalent to 21.4% of the overall market. While Toyota still wins outright as the overall leader in market share, Tesla is snapping at its heels. While we've got something of a metaphorical arms race in the EV world to see who makes the quickest car, CEO of Stellantis, Carlos Tavares, said this week that it's not just about hitting top speeds first. Talking about the brand's new full-size EV platform, he said that being able to get out of trouble quickly is a matter of safety. And honestly, I can see his point. Talking of safety, a new bill making its way through the US Congress, one that's supported on both sides, aims to give the Consumer Product Safety Commission a new directive to create federal safety standards for the construction of and importation of e-bike batteries. Watch this space. Building on the teaser image it showed last week, Stellantis has teased new interior pictures of its upcoming all-electric Jeep Wagoneer S. It is quite the plush interior, and as a side note, thanks to those who noticed the typo in last week's show with a missing E in Wagoneer. Cox Automotive's annual car buyer journal study suggests that buying an EV is a far nicer experience than buying an internal combustion engine vehicle. It reports that 80% of EV owners were highly satisfied with their buying process versus 73% of ICE car buyers.
After promising it for a really long time, Volkswagen has confirmed that all 2023 and newer ID4 EVs in the US will be capable of plug and charge at Electrify America charging stations from early this year. It's honestly strange it took so long to flick the switch. National Car Charging, working with ChemPower as its hardware partner, has nabbed a brand new contract with the state of California to install non-networked DC fast charging infrastructure across the state. It's quite the coup for both ChemPower and NCC. Nissan has said it wants to produce LFP battery packs in-house as a way of lowering its total production costs for EVs. While Nissan used to make its own battery packs in-house, it sold its then NCM battery facilities to a third party. LFP battery cells, though, are a lot cheaper to make. Ford has revealed a plug-in hybrid variant of its Transit Connect. Due to go on sale in Europe, it will be available as a cargo van and a combi model for personal and fleet use. It promises up to 50 kilowatts of DC quick charging and 110 kilometers or 68 miles of EV-only range. Just as Renault is holding off on an IPO of its EV arm, so too is Volkswagen putting plans for an IPO on hold. But rather than be for an EV brand, the IPO on hold is for PowerCo, Volkswagen's battery division. It's not clear if or when a future IPO will happen. Kia confirmed this week that its upcoming EV4 electric sedan, which was initially due to go into production at the tail end of this year, is now being pushed back to an early 2025 date for the start of production. The delay is allegedly due to, quote, market changes. Robin Denholm, Tesla's official chair of the board of directors, has signed a new contract with Tesla that will ultimately allow her to sell off $50 million worth of Tesla stock. Official SEC filings state she will sell up to 281,116 shares. Sticking with Tesla, its largest investor to date, Leo Koguan, has taken public his grievances over how the company is run. Having contacted the board over concerns he had and being unsatisfied with their response, he went public on X, stating that Tesla is, quote, a family business masquerading as a public company, end quote. BYD has signed a preliminary land purchase agreement in Hungary that could ultimately see the firm build its first European EV production facility there. While it is still early days, BYD has been on the lookout for the location of a first European factory now for more than a year. UK EV startup Arrival is reportedly in financial trouble after Nasdaq suspended trading of the company this week and delisted it. Reuters claims the company is in talks with a major accounting firm to handle a potential bankruptcy filing if it's unable to secure extra funds. BMW has confirmed that it will be adding a new all-wheel drive variant of its i5 EV to the 5 Series lineup, as well as a plug-in hybrid. BMW's i5 xDrive 40 will be positioned between the rear-wheel drive i5 eDrive 40 and i5 M60 xDrive. Tesla is being sued by more than 20 Californian counties, which claim that it's mishandled hazardous waste at its facilities. The lawsuit was filed on Tuesday in the state's court and seeks civil penalties and an injunction to force Tesla to change its waste disposal practices. And finally for the short shorts, reporting from the Washington Post suggests that GM's autonomous vehicle arm crews lost a total of nearly $3.5 billion last year, meaning that GM is reportedly looking for ways to stem the flow of cash and give crews a narrower focus point. And those are your short shots. There will be more next week. Our final two stories are coming, but first a quick word from one of today's video sponsors, Atmos Financial. Imagine a bank where your savings not only grow, but also go towards growing a greener world. That is exactly what Atmos Financial does for you. 
With Atmos, every dollar in your checking and savings account is funding projects that light up lives with solar energy rather than fossil fuels. Atmos is banking that builds a better tomorrow with every swipe of your card because they're committed to investing 100% in clean, equitable and sustainable progress. With a 3.5% savings rate and a mobile app, your finances and the climate go hand in hand. It charges no monthly fees and there are no minimums keeping you awake at night. It offers accessible solar loans for those who want to give the fossil fuel industry the ultimate middle finger. By joining Atmos using the link below, you're not only choosing a smarter way to bank, you're planting seeds for a healthier earth. And every sign-up supports this channel so we can keep bringing you the content you love. I'm personally a customer and I love knowing that I'm helping save money and making sure my money doesn't end up funding the fossil fuel industry. And now it's time for those last two stories. We love ourselves some small, affordable cars on this channel. And while the auto industry en masse seems to be hell bent on trying to erase small, affordable EVs, we're going to continue to shout their praises as long as we can. Which is why this week we were very disheartened to hear multiple news outlets reporting the claim that Volkswagen is considering cancelling its ID3 electric vehicle, the current smallest ID badged EV you can buy. The reason is the upcoming ninth generation Volkswagen Golf, which the company has already confirmed will be all electric. It is, according to the company's head of technical development, a little close to the same market that the ID3 currently occupies. With the ID2 also scheduled for production, it looks as if Volkswagen is worried that it will have too many similarly sized EVs on sale and the ID3 could get cut as a consequence. And Finally, we regularly state on this channel that your mileage may and will vary. And while automaker range promises are a rough guide, there's nothing better than a real world range test to see how well a vehicle will perform. And when it comes to range tests, there are none as good as the annual winter range test for EVs carried out by the Norwegian Automobile Federation and Motor Magazine. This year, the pair tested more EVs than ever before, testing more than 20 different models to see which was the best in terms of range and efficiency at cold temperatures. This year, though, there was a new winner with the Hi-Fi Z traveling more than 522 kilometers, 324 miles on a charge despite the winter weather. Not only did it travel the furthest, but it also managed to get a range closest to its official WLTP range figures. Well done. And on that note, we are in fact done for today. As always, a massive thank you to the Electric Vehicle Association for sponsoring today's show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. The EVA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make that switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, you'll gain access to a clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EVA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. So find out more by heading to electricauto.org. And thanks to Energy Sage. Follow the link below to find out how easy it can be to get verified, trustworthy solar and heat pump experts helping you make the step towards energy self-sufficiency through solar, through the roof of your home, joining a local community project or getting a heat pump installed. And thanks to Atmos Financial. Bank better by following the link below. As usual, we would love it if you'd consider supporting us from $1 a month on Patreon, about $10.08 a year. The overwhelming majority of our income today comes from Patreon support, and it's thanks to you that I'm able to pay the team and make sure that everyone has health care. And yes, even this month, pay myself a teeny tiny salary, which I haven't been able to do for a really long time. However, we do have some big expenses coming up this year. So if you'd like to help lighten the load, do follow the links below or book myself and Kate for a personal one on one consulting session or in fact, a full blown presentation to your community group or company. And don't forget to buy Erin's amazing latest design, 
end charging deserts. For the month of February, it, along with Erin's past designs, will all be available in our shop. And you can buy them as stickers and you can put them on apparel and much, much more. And of course, we will be back next week as usual with content going out every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Lots of people were upset last week that I was, quote, bringing my lifestyle choices into this show and being all political. And I'm not going to dignify that with an answer. But I will, however, reiterate my comments from the end of last week's show. If you are in a minority currently feeling the full force brunt of hate at the hands of legislators in certain states who want you to no longer exist, I want you to know you're not alone. You are valid. You are loved. And you're freaking awesome because you're watching this show. So until next time, stay safe, regardless of your identity or who you love. Be an amazing ally to others. Be kind. And please, for the sake of everyone's future, keep evolving. Keep evolving.